Welcome to the Deep Dive, where we sift through the noise, pull out the most vital insights from our sources, and hopefully equip you to be truly well-informed. Mm -hmm. Today, we're plunging into a topic that's, well, not just cutting edge, but absolutely crucial for global health. Absolutely. We're talking about how artificial intelligence, AI, is fundamentally transforming HIV vaccine research and uh, clinical trials. Yeah. Our deep dive today comes from key insights presented at the IAS 2025 conference in Kigali, Rwanda. Specifically, the article AI set to speed up HIV vaccine research and trials focusing on fair access. A really important piece. Definitely. And our mission here is simple to unpack how AI isn't just some buzzword, you know, right. but how it's actually a practical, powerful tool that's accelerating real-world progress in the global fight against HIV. And the potential here really is immense. I mean, for decades, HIV vaccine development has been one of the toughest challenges out there in medical science. Absolutely. Partly because the virus is just so complex, yeah. but AI, it really offers a new frontier here. It enhances everything, right? From the vaccine design itself to significantly improving how we analyze all this complex data. Right. And it's really set to revolutionize how clinical trials are run. Yeah. And what's particularly impactful, I think, is its ability to create faster progress, especially in low and middle income countries. Yeah, where the need is greatest. Exactly. Where the burden of HIV is highest and frankly, where these advancements are needed most urgently. So with that uh, immense potential in mind, let's sort of peel back the layers. Okay. Where is AI already making a, a tangible difference, yeah. particularly maybe at the community level, you know, reaching those who need it most, mm -hmm. perhaps even people seeking guidance through services like the HIV RNA test guide. It sounds almost, well, too good to be true sometimes, reaching vulnerable communities like that. Yeah. How exactly does AI build that bridge where maybe traditional methods struggled? That's a great question, and it brings us straight to the work of Jurer Ratemotion. He's a health policy expert at Duke University's Global Health Institute, and he highlights that it often comes down to trust and accessibility. Right. You know, traditional testing methods, they can carry a lot of stigma, or they can just be logistically really difficult for many people. Sure. AI offers these new ways to deliver privacy and convenience. And he actually cited a fascinating real-world example, didn't he? A, a study from Frontiers in Public Health back in February 2024. That's the one. A clinical trial in Kenya. Right. Looking at AI support for HIV self-testing hmm. in private pharmacies. Exactly. What they did was use computer vision, essentially AI that can see, okay. to interpret HIV self-test results right alongside human readers. And here's the kicker, right? The part that really makes you stop and think. Yeah. The AI model showed perfect sensitivity and negative predictive value. Perfect, which right. is just... Yeah. yeah. To put that simply, for identifying HIV, it was perfectly accurate at spotting everyone who did have HIV, that's the sensitivity, mm -hmm. and also perfectly accurate confirming who didn't have it, mm -hmm. the negative predictive value. So virtually eliminating those critical false results in those areas. Exactly. And it actually outperformed pharmacy clients and even the human providers in some key areas. That's incredible. Think about that. An AI reading a simple self-test, doing better on those metrics than trained pharmacy staff. Yeah. This isn't just about like efficiency. It feels like a monumental leap in making accurate HIV testing accessible and almost foolproof. Especially for those vulnerable populations who might really fear going into traditional clinics. Exactly. That feels like the real game changer there. And what's also fascinating is how AI goes beyond just, you know, reading the tests. Revosion's team also looked at chatbots, ah, uh -huh. powered by natural language processing, NLP, which is basically AI understanding and generating human-like language, right? and how these can significantly improve outreach and testing, especially among high-risk populations. How so? Well, they found these chatbots can mimic real empathetic conversations. They feel personal, trustworthy. Which is so important for sensitive topics like HIV. Crucial. And the user engagement they saw was really impressive. Right. Over 90% of users engaged with the chatbot all the way through. 90%? That's huge engagement. It really is. And maybe even more notably, 56% of users actually requested an HIV self-test kit right through the chatbot. Wow. So it directly led to action. Directly. And that's remarkable, especially because many were young, first-time testers. The very group that might be hesitant otherwise. Precisely. People who might hesitate in a traditional setting because of privacy worries or stigma, mm. it really democratizes access to information and the actual tests. 
So for you listening, this means AI can also help connect vulnerable groups with healthcare providers too, mm -hmm. right? Making that path to diagnosis and care much smoother. Exactly. By analyzing behavior data, providing these tailored rapid responses, AI tools can reach more people in ways that fit their lives right where they are. Which ultimately helps find HIV cases sooner. That's crucial, not just for the individual. But for public health overall, it helps prevent further transmission and gives us invaluable info to improve vaccine outreach plans, make them more targeted, more effective. Yeah, it's about overcoming those old barriers yeah. that kept people from getting tested in the first place. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's incredible for diagnosis and outreach. But like you said, the ultimate goal is prevention. Right. The vaccine. So what about that? Preventing HIV in the first place. This is where the story gets really groundbreaking, isn't it? How AI is revolutionizing the design of vaccines. It really is reshaping the entire discovery strategy. Yeah. And this is the domain of researchers like Rory Henderson, associate professor at Duke School of Medicine. Okay. He explains how these powerful AI tools, particularly machine learning and these things called protein language models. Protein language models. Like translating protein? Kind of. Think of it like Google Translate, but for the incredibly complex language of proteins and their genetic sequences. They're helping researchers finally grapple with HIV's incredibly complex structure and its uh, rapid evolution. Which has always been the huge hurdle, right? Mm. It mutates so fast. Constantly. Constantly changing its appearance to evade our immune systems. That makes vaccine design extraordinarily difficult. So AI helps understand that moving target. Exactly. These models are helping us finally understand that constantly shifting target. Henderson highlights, and I'm quoting here, modern AI tools provide a means to integrate complex data and recognize complex patterns, mm -hmm. provide their training using the right data and are guided by the most informative features and the scalability. He put it really succinctly. If we train an AI algorithm to recognize the antigen features driving high precision antibody mutant selection, we can scale to 1000s of antibody targets on the hours today's time scale. Okay, let's put that in perspective. Yeah. Designing antibodies against a virus like HIV. Yeah. Historically, that was like finding a needle in, I don't know, a thousand haystacks. Right. Sometimes without even knowing exactly what the needle looks like. A painstaking trial and error process years, decades even. Mm -hmm. And Henderson's saying AI can now search all those haystacks at once with incredible precision. In hours. In hours. That just fundamentally redefines the speed and precision here. We're moving from slow discovery to like targeted engineering. Exactly. And these protein language models specifically, they analyze those long chains of amino acids that make up proteins like the ones on HIV surface. Okay. They generate these incredibly detailed representations of HIV antibodies. This helps researchers pinpoint exactly which tiny mutations contribute to broad neutralization. Which is the holy grail, right? Yeah, An antibody that fights off many different strains. Absolutely crucial for a global vaccine, given how diverse HIV is. Yeah. So by fine tuning the these models with diverse data, scientists can predict how potential antibodies will bind to the virus. That leads to much more effective vaccine designs than we could manage before. Much more targeted. Much more targeted. And if we connect this to the bigger picture, the value of integrating data from all these different sources just can't be overstated. You mean like combining different types of research? Exactly. Imagine taking information from genomic sequencing the virus's genetic makeup, okay. then epidemiological surveillance, where and how it's spreading, right. and immunological research, how our bodies react to it. AI systems can combine all these insights to constantly refine the vaccine targets. So it adapts. It adapts, which is crucial for a virus like HIV that, as we said, mutates rapidly and behaves differently in different places. Mm -hmm. AI lets researchers design vaccines that are more responsive to that real world viral diversity instead of relying on static templates that might quickly become useless. A dynamic approach for a dynamic virus. Precisely. OK, so we've got better outreach, better testing, faster, smarter vaccine design. Right. Now let's shift focus to that crucial next phase, clinical trials. Yeah, the proving ground. Exactly. Because even with the best design, getting it tested and approved, that's notoriously slow, expensive, often inefficient. A huge bottleneck. Right. 
Can AI help tackle those delays, those inefficiencies that often slow down progress here? Absolutely. And this is where people like Shirley Cauley come in. She's the founder and CEO of Bioinformatico, a clinical data management company. Okay. Her work really focuses on how AI can streamline trials, especially in those low and middle income countries we talked about. Where the infrastructure might be more fragmented. Exactly. Where trial infrastructure is often fragmented, resources are constrained. These are the places needing the vaccines most urgently, but facing the biggest hurdles to running complex trials. Makes sense. Kali puts it this way, she says, we work in complex resource constrained environments and AI applied thoughtfully to systems can alleviate operational pain points. Operational pain points. Right. Like the day to day stuff. Yeah, the everyday bottlenecks. Hmm. She continues, it can help us unlock speed, scale and reliability. We need to modernize trial systems, not just discovery tools, if we want to deliver results faster, particularly for diseases like HIV that demand urgency. So modernizing the nuts and bolts of running a trial. Exactly. And are there concrete examples of how AI helps with that? Oh, yeah. Imagine just the sheer volume of paperwork and data in a trial. Overwhelming, I bet. Totally. AI can automate setting up clinical trial databases that reduces human error, speeds up launch times. Okay. It can review complex protocols for logical errors, catching inconsistencies early on that might otherwise cause huge delays or even invalidate results down the line. Right, finding problems before they derail things. Mm -hmm. It can even help with regulatory compliance, navigating those complex, often varying rules across different countries. Wow, the implication there seems pretty powerful. Yeah. Does this mean more local institutions, say in Africa or elsewhere, could run trials more independently? That's a huge part of it. Empowering them to run trials independently and at scale, reducing their reliance on expensive external partners. Which builds local capacity, uh -huh. makes trials more relevant locally. And ultimately gets results faster. It's a win-win-win. Yeah. And that leads right into the critical importance of scaling these tools equitably. Right, making sure everyone benefits. Because many early stage biotech companies, academic institutions in the global south, they just don't have those massive centralized data coordinating centers that big pharma might have. They lack the infrastructure. Exactly. So AI in this context can help level the playing field. It provides standardized automated solutions that don't need huge upfront investment in infrastructure or personnel. That makes sense. Kali gave this really powerful example of a large HIV vaccine trial. It generated dozens of protocol versions, memos, bulletins. Just a flood of dots. Complete flood. Human teams can easily get overwhelmed. You can see how errors could creep in. Oh, easily. So AI-driven document management yeah. using large language models that could dramatically cut down confusion and error, mm -hmm. make trials much more manageable, more efficient for smaller local teams. It removes a huge administrative burden. Exactly. Letting researchers focus on the science and the patients, not drowning in paperwork. Okay, so taking all this in, better outreach, smarter design, more efficient and equitable trials. What does this all really mean for the future of HIV vaccine development? Mm -hmm. It feels like the overarching theme from all these experts is pretty clear. AI isn't some magic wand, right? Definitely not a silver bullet. Not a silver bullet that solves everything. But it is undeniably a powerful catalyst. That's the word. A catalyst for faster, more equitable progress. Yeah. That's precisely it. AI can remove critical barriers that are currently slowing things down right, right across the board, from accelerating discovery to improving trials to how communities are reached. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, there are shared considerations we need to keep in mind, things like ensuring data quality, addressing potential algorithmic bias. Especially when you implement these advanced tools in places with maybe limited digital infrastructure. Exactly. Those are real challenges. But the consensus seems to be that if we use AI thoughtfully with human oversight. Right. Human still in the loop. Always. Then AI can significantly increase the speed, the equity and the overall effectiveness of HIV vaccine research. It's about augmenting human capability, not replacing it. That's a really important distinction. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us on this deep dive. It's been fascinating and honestly, pretty hopeful, exploring this intersection of AI and HIV research. It really is inspiring work. It truly is. Mm -hmm. Seeing how technology is being harnessed for such a critical global health mission, bringing us closer, hopefully, to a future free from HIV. Mm. And as you, our listener, go about your day, maybe something to consider. 
how might these AI advancements in HIV research set a precedent? Yeah. You know, for tackling other pressing global health challenges. Like malaria, TB. Exactly. And what new considerations, maybe ethical ones, might emerge as AI gets even more integrated into healthcare worldwide. Lots to think about there. Definitely. Keep exploring, keep learning. We'll see you next time on The Deep Dive.